Peace and love, y'all. It's your brother, Avis, and we are here with another episode of What's the Word Wednesdays, Season 2, Episode 32. And just like we usually do, y'all, let me know when y'all coming in. Please tell me how y'all doing, how y'all feeling, and what's the word? And so, like we usually do, too, I am also going to be posting in the comments the topics for today and also going to be throwing up our show logo in the background. Instagram has changed it up a little bit, but there we go right there. So, again, once y'all coming in, let me know how y'all doing, how y'all feeling, and what's the word, okay? On top of that, I appreciate those who watch and listen, whether now or later on Instagram or YouTube, especially if you're on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to your boy Avis Speaks, and don't forget to also hit that notification bell because there will be more content and videos coming out like this, whether it's this series or other series, so please go check it out, go subscribe, because we're on our way to a thousand and we're going to keep going from there, but with that, y'all appreciate y'all and let's give it some time before we get today's show going which the topics that we got for today are going to consist of one of course the news portion of the show so get into the current events of what at least i got up right now when it comes to what's going on second we're going to be talking about light versus dark and then lastly we're going to talk about how to make any place your home okay but again let me know how y'all doing how y'all feeling in the comments and tell me what's the word as i'm still getting a little few more things ready for us let me change this all right and below Boom. All right. Perfect. Y'all let me know how I sound, too, if I sound good as well, too. I know I always be asking that. It's just I can't tell. <laughs> I don't have a background to come back and tell me how I sound or not. But let's finish off this song. Let a few more people come through. And then we'll get started with the show song. And then on to the news. Lift your hands up high yeah, till we make a spirit bomb with the renegade, y'all. Come on. All right, y'all. Now let's go ahead and let's get into the show song. Again, if you don't know, just listen. But if you do, sing along. So I tell you how it goes. And we tell them like this. What's the word, y'all? What's the word? What's the word, y'all? What's the word? What's the word, y'all? What's the word? Tell them like, what's the word? What's the word? What you heard? We gotta know, yeah, what's the word? Once again, y'all, it's your brother, Avis, and we are here with another episode of What's the Word Wednesday, season two, episode 32, y'all. So, shouts out to the brother, Zachariah made it in the building, man. How you doing, brother? Let me know, all of y'all, how y'all doing, how y'all feeling, and what's the word? All right. So like I spoke about earlier, got some topics for y'all tonight, man. Um, and we'll definitely make sure we get into them, speak about them and just have a good show as we usually do. So for tonight's topics, we're going to be looking into, of course, the news section. So we're looking into what's going on currently in current events. And then second, we're going to be talking about the whole thing between light versus dark. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how to make any place your home. All sounds interesting, right? 
All right, so first, let's go ahead and let's get into these current events. Now, when it comes to the current events I got for y'all today, I have a few on some updates when it comes to the pandemic, as you usually do. I just cover it because there's always something coming out in the news about it. Then we're going to be talking about some of the shortages and help as well as the backup of getting supplies and resources and also what's going on nature wise and then lastly i'm going to also talk about there is someone uh, musically that i want to talk about that has passed on to the next life but again what's the word y'all how y'all doing how y'all feeling and let me know what's up brother sabu in the building the booth is on fire all right y'all let's get to these current events so, first one I got for y'all is a quick update on what's going on with the COVID cases overall, as well as um, the deaths. So, according to CNN Health, and from the article, it's called Tracking COVID-19 Cases in the U.S. You could, I'll come down here, and I'm looking, and for right now... Our overall total cases within the United States is 46,252,631. Those are total cases altogether. And this is only specifically in the U.S. And the total deaths from that is 750,410,000. Or 700. You know, 750, 410 cases of people dying. And right now, the one at the brunt of having the most um, deaths is honestly where I'm at. Cali. Cali is the one that's saying it's, it's roughly saying has the most deaths. And right now, from off of this list, the ones with the least, from what I can see, is um american samoa is one with um the least um cases happening but besides that let me make sure i get this news right or this sound right just know that we still have um rising and declining happenings within um the news in the cases and this is specifically only for the delta virus since delta is still what's reigning supreme right now this is the whole setup for letting us know the spread of those cases so again the case total number is 46 million two hundred and fifty two thousand six hundred thirty one for the cases and for the total deaths is seven hundred and fifty thousand four hundred and ten but Y'all got any questions on that? As well as if y'all have any news that y'all want to share, like please throw it in the comments. Always more than welcome to. Now, we're going to move on to the next thing. Boom. Because I could have went global, but for some of us folks that's here in the U.S., you know, that's what they had here for it. But what I want to talk about in this next segment is very interesting. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about this. Um, again, this comes from CNN Health. And the headline reads... Families could be denied death benefits if their unvaccinated loved one dies. Very interesting. Could be. No, could be. So again, like we usually do, two paragraphs, and we out. So, article reads, These days, workers who refuse to get vaccinated against COVID-19 may face financial repercussions for higher health insurance premiums to loss of their jobs. Now, the financial fallout might follow workers beyond the grave. If they die of COVID and weren't vaccinated, their families may not get death benefits that they would otherwise have received. And this is right now, let's see New York. So, New York's Metropolitan Transportation Authority no longer pays a 500,000 death benefit to the families of Subway. Bus 
and commuter rail workers who die of COVID if the worker were unvaccinated at the time of death. Um, other employers similarly have concerns about providing death or other benefits to employees who refuse to be vaccinated. In Massachusetts, the new Beckford City Council sought to extend accidental death benefits to city employees who died of COVID, but the mayor did not sign legislation because, among other things, it did not prohibit payment if the worker was unvaccinated. So, I'll do this one real because it has President or Joe Biden in it. So it says, President Joe Biden has learned has leaned hard on businesses to make sure workers were vaccinated. In September, the administration announced all employees with 100 or more workers would be required to either ensure they're vaccinated or test employees every week for COVID. So, again, I'm not going to go all into the article there. Again, the article is from CNN Health. Article title is Families Could Be Denied Death Benefits If Their Unvaccinated Loved One Dies. Y'all let me know how y'all think and y'all feel about that as I'm setting up the next um, article for us to look into. But yeah, it's a very interesting, you know, setup. I will just say that. Very interesting setup. So moving to the next one, I'm actually going to play a video for y'all. And this still goes in line with um, dispelling some of some COVID myths from the one and only Dr. Fauci. Oh, yeah. Dr. Fauci, for sure. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna point the camera there and I'm going to put on the sound so that we can make sure we hear this. So y'all let me know if y'all can hear it when I go about and do this. So let's go ahead. Let me flip this. Boom. Y'all can see buddy right there. Let me turn the volume up so we can hear this. And I'm going to go ahead and let's press this. Now go ahead, play for us. I do for us. want you to address a myth that is kind of pernicious that this affects fertility. That is something mm-hmm. that parents are worried about for their kids. Can you talk about that? There's no indication whatsoever, even any me- mechanistic feasibility that would it would affect fertility at all. In fact, in the millions and millions of doses and billions of doses that have been given worldwide of the vaccine, there's no indication whatsoever that it has anything to do with fertility. Giving it to a child, you have to at least look for a plausible mechanism of what that would be. And there is none. There is none. It's so important to note. You mentioned the hundreds, you know, almost a thousand children, as you said, of all ages who have died. And I also, though, want to note the other risks to kids, potential long term risks that we don't know about when it comes to them contracting COVID. What do you say to parents about that? Well, that's just another reason to get the children vaccinated. There is something called long COVID. It is seen in adults and it is seen in children to a lesser percentage, but it is seen in children. And what that is, is that a person, even a child, can get infected, can get a COVID. It could be mild, it could be moderate, or it could be severe. And when you clear the virus, in essence, you're so-called past the acute stage, often it takes a considerable period of time of getting back to normal. And that's characterized by chronic, almost sometimes debilitating fatigue, muscle aches, sleep disorders, and things like that. So you don't want them to get infected in the first place. And sometimes when they do, they have persistence of symptoms. Yet again, another reason to get the children vaccinated. Boom. Now, y'all, let me see. Well, if getting an appointment is a sign of interest in D.C., it's already hard to... Yeah, so y'all let me know how y'all how y'all feel about. Oh, see, look at that. I right, was just tripping out. But y'all tell me how y'all feel about that in particular when it comes to, you know, this, these different side effects and things that could end up happening with um, the vaccine. And this is specifically now for children because the one for the children have been authorized or at least it's been okayed by 
Um, I don't want to get it wrong because I got to remember. I don't think it was, think it was okay by the FDA. So Moderna and then Johnson and Johnson. Um, I haven't heard um, from Pfizer specifically yet, but it might be wrong again. I don't see any other news on that, but yeah. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. Now, continuing with some more of that news. Yes, you already know. You already know that we're playing with that. Yes, it's a spatial awareness. You know it. But next article we got for y'all is an article from CNN again. But this one is through MSN. And headline reads, Indian homegrown COVID-19 shot wins World Health Organization emergency use authorization so now we have another but this is specifically for in india that has been given the emergency use authorization or approval so let me read this two paragraphs and we out article reads the who said on wednesday that it has granted approval for Indian drug maker Bharat Biotechnics homegrown COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use listing paving the way for it to be accepted as a valid vaccine in many poor countries. The WHO tweeted that its technical advisory group had ruled the benefits of the shot known as COVID-19 yeah, COVID scene, if I'm saying it right, significantly outweighs the risk that it met WHO standards for protection against COVID-19. Um, let's see. The COVAXine, COVAXin was given emergency use authorization in India in January, even before the completion of its late stage trial which later found that the shot was 78% effective against severe COVID-19. Now, I'm going to leave it at that. Again, two paragraphs and we're out. But basically, for those out in India, um, this is another um, vaccine for them to to be using and having, even though it it came out to be that it is 78% effective against severe COVID-19. So again, it's severe. Not talking about regular, whatever, it's 78% effective against severe. But, but yeah, y'all, I just wanted to put that out there because then there's more and more of these um, being grown because I will say this, just follow the money. Follow the money. That's all I'm telling y'all right now and wondering why some of this stuff has happened. Not only trying to get it out to just everywhere in different countries and places that actually need some type of resource for it, but... Follow the money, y'all. Follow it. Right. Before I do that, let me go back because I saw these comments. Let me get on these real quick and then we'll continue on to the next one. Okay. How about the long term effects of the VAX, though? Yeah, there is um, no data for that just yet. The long term effects was done up to about what? Now, eight to 10. Like, it's almost going to be what a whole year that we finally got, got this. So, this is their their long-term effects on it right now, which we're in um, the stage four clinical trial for a lot of some, especially for the Pfizer, the one Pfizer one that was approved, which was the adult one that was approved, um, fully approved by FDA, the FDA. That one is in the its fourth um, clinical stage trial, which basically is to study those long-term effects. But yeah, Right now, we don't have full concrete ones. There is some that are, you know, preliminary. But when you talk about long term, that's going to take over. Long, this is like if you heard of longitudinal studies, y'all, like a longitudinal study is not just one year. That takes a multitude of years. Sometimes it follows the lifespan of certain people, too, depending on what is being addressed in the study. But yeah, um, we don't know just yet, but I just hear it from uh, Fauci. He just said something about there's a such thing called long COVID. So the long term um, effects and things that happen, adverse effects, at least from having COVID, the virus, not from the vaccine itself. So I don't know. We'll learn some more about that. 
Next, he said, according to Fauci, get vaccinated if you breathe air and pay taxes, because if you don't, you're getting it anyways, lol. And is you to do you getting it anyways, bruh. Instagram, YouTube, this is all being reported here. Again, this is not any of my quote unquote, you know, information. This is all from different articles from CNN and NPR. So if you want to get on them, go talk to them. But yeah, brother, man, basically, I mean, go check, go check um, videos of Fauci speaking about this same thing, but with the AIDS virus. Go check that out. You'll see, you'll see some very um, interesting um, parallels or similarities, I should say. Right, let's go on to the next one so I can get this news out and out of the way for y'all. So, next article. Um, I have my I have my my feelings about this particular person, but just to your point, um, brother, that literally at this point, some people is going to end up contracting it even if they do all they need to do for it, and that's what this next article is about which comes from NPR, and this article title reads, Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti tests positive for COVID-19 at the Climate Summit. So, and this is specifically to Cowling, so that's why it rings and feels a certain way for me. Because again, I'm not going to say, but if y'all get an instance of feel how I feel, y'all know. Right, article title reads, Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti, who is attending the UN Climate Conference in Glasgow, Scotland, known as COP26, has test positive for COVID-19, his office announced Wednesday. So that's today, y'all. Garcetti, who is vaccinated against COVID-19, was feeling well and isolating in his hotel room, according to a tweet from the mayor's account. Locate, local TV station KABC reports that the mayor is attending the conference with seven staff members. A spokesperson for the mayor's office tells NPR that Garcetti was the only one from the office who tested positive for COVID-19. Garcetti's office did not disclose any other additional information on his diagnosis when contacted by email the cdc recommends that those who are fully vaccinated get tested five to seven days after coming in close contact with someone who tested positive for covid19 the agency says those who test positive shall isolate for 10 days or as long as they are experiencing symptoms so i just find it interesting because again at the end of the day you can do as much as you need to to help lessen the ability or if not the possibility of you contracting the virus. Just knowing that depending on what you're doing, it can still happen. But we'll see. We'll see how, how he does and how he feels after 10 days plus when it comes to that. But yeah, y'all. If y'all got any more, please throw them in the comments. Let me know how y'all doing, how y'all feeling, and all of that. Yeah, brother. You know, background music provided by yours truly. So, in conjunction with um, collaborations with folks. Right. Um, another article I just wanted to touch on briefly and just tell, let everybody know. Because we spoke about it um, two, what's the words, or two Wednesdays prior about um, the issue of the ports as well as um, truckers, the the low staffing of that and the long wait times for shipments and loads to be put onto the trucks to get around to people. So that means small food shortages in different states as well as resources in different states as as well as um, race of gas and other of uh, those type of resources. So then wondering why the gas prices is raising um and a, and a multitude of things, as well as the cost of living and inflation on all different types of products, especially meat, has went up almost, what, I think almost 11%, but it's somewhere roughly around 10%. So I just want to briefly touch on this article. It comes from Wall Street Journal. 
and the title is Help Wanted Truck Drivers to Unclog the Supply Chain. And basically, it reads, the truck industry has been doing been dealing with a shortage of drivers and high job turnover but chain supply block bottlenecks have underscored the need for new recruits here's how some companies are trying to get them behind the wheel and it's a video but i'm not gonna play the video i just want to put that out there that there is a need right now for truckers and honestly if the truckers ended up striking or doing anything of that sort there would be a huge impact financially um economy wise as well as food agriculture all of that stuff so keep that in mind uh, knowing that's the situation going on with shortages all over the place for jobs now the other thing i will go ahead and i'll just play right now so we can get it because I don't even know really what is going on. But there is supposed to be a coastal um, storm that's coming and happening. So I'm going to play the video so we can get an update that what's happening weather-wise. And this comes from MSN. And this is have to do with the weather channel on MSN. So let's see what is up with that. I'm going to play the video for us. And you can see it. So boom. And now let me go ahead turn up and let's get it well if you live along the southeast coast places like savannah charleston tybee island uh, be prepared for a very significant coastal flooding event that's going to happen basically over the next couple of days kind of thursday through friday is the worst of it now the setup is generally that there's an area of low pressure that's going to move across florida and with the big high off toward the north and west there's going to be a really strong tight pressure gradient and the onshore flow is going to be very persistent over a couple of days and uh, when we talk about persistent onshore flow, it doesn't only matter how strong the wind is, which it's going to be pretty strong, but it, it matters how long it lasts. So I think in places like Charleston, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some scenes like this. This is actually video from uh, April of 2020. This was uh, a flooding event that stemmed from some rainstorms rather than coastal flooding, but we're going to see scenes like that in some of those places I was talking about. Let me give you an idea of uh, when the worst of it is going to be. Basically, long story short, uh, it's going to be the high tide cycles uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday morning. By Saturday morning, uh, Charleston Harbor could get up to 8.8 .8 feet. Of course, widespread flooding in downtown Charleston anytime we get above 8 feet, as you guys probably know if you live there. Uh, near Savannah, we're expecting to crest close to 11 feet. And when you get above 10 and a half feet, uh, 10 and a half feet, Tybee Island becomes pretty much isolated by flooding. So uh, Highway 80 goes underwater. The record's 12.6, by the way, so we'll be under that. But um, this is going to be a very significant flooding event. And then to add insult to injury, there's more rain in the forecast over the next couple of days. So, you know, we initially get the flooding from what's going on uh, with the wind along the coast. And then the rain can kind of exacerbate that a little bit. So please don't take this lightly. Be prepared for some serious coastal flooding the next. So for my folks over there on the coast side there in the U.S., um, definitely make sure you take your precautions and um, be safe. Specifically, I know right now got a lot of in basically North Carolina, but all on that coastal part there. Um, take your precautions. Be safe these next couple of days. If not, I don't know if, it, if go to a week, but be safe. Now. Last but not least, y'all, for the news, and again, if y'all have any other ones, please let me know, and you just literally put them in there, but this last article I wanted to talk about comes from NPR, and the headline reads, Ronnie Wilson, co-founder of the R&B group The Gap Band, has passed on at the age of 73. So, for me... I don't necessarily know every single person, definitely in the Gap Band, but for those really who knew the sound, especially the songs like Outstanding, it's mostly one of the songs I definitely remember from the Gap Band. Uh, legendary group to me, for sure. Um, main person I know from there um, besides Ronnie w Wilson is Charlie Wilson. So... With that, I wanted just to read a bit of that and send my, you know, condolences, love, and energy out to the family. 
but I gotta at least read this out for y'all. Again, we'll do we'll do two paragraphs and we're out. So article reads: Ronnie Wilson, founding member of the R&B group The Gap Band, has passed on. He was 73 years old. The Associated Press reports. Um, Wilson formed the Gap Band in the early 70s in Tulsa, Oklahoma, with his brothers, Charlie and Robert Wilson. So all of them together. The name was inspired by the three streets in their hometown, Greenwood, Archer, and Pine, that had defined the Black Raw Street District and that was destroyed in 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre. The brothers grew up with a love for music, raised by music teachers. Um, their mom and their dad was a preacher. Ronnie would develop into an accomplished multi-instrumentalist, contributing keyboard, horns, percussion, and additional to the vocals on several of the band's albums. Now I'll continue, I can keep continuing saying that. But again, I just wanted to um, bring that to light. I love the Gap Man. Uh, much love and respect again to Ronnie Wilson and condolences to the family and good energy out to them. But if y'all don't know about the Gap Man, go check out the Gap Man. Please do. Be a nice listen, especially during the gold in the 70s. Like, come on. All right. With that, y'all, if y'all have anything else, please throw them down in the comments. But that is all I got for news. If y'all have anything else for news, put it there down in the comments. If y'all have any other questions, go ahead and add it in there. Um, but this ends the news portion of this live. So now we're going to be moving on to the next topic. But before you do that, I want to at least put out the disclaimer. If you are going to come on just know that you do um wave and tell me that you are fine with being recorded because this goes up on youtube if not it is fine for you to stay into the comments and have your points and the discussions from there now with that disclaimer out the way let's get into the next topic which is light versus dark now when you're thinking about light and dark, you may be wondering, asking, okay, where are you going to go with um, this concept of light and dark? Like, what what do you want to speak about? Now, before I can even do that, <laughs> let me go ahead and let's pull up some definitions so we can at least have a background of what we're going to talk about. So, I'm going to pull up light and then I'm also pull up um, dark and we're going to go into both of those just to speak on them and then we will continue from there All right and if y'all have anything y'all want to want to say before let me know in the comments when you hear the words light and dark what are the first few things that come to mind so put them in the comments All right as y'all are doing that, I'm going to read out definitions for light. And there is a number of them because light can be seen as a noun, an adjective, as well as a verb. There is a number of things that it can be seen as, but I'm going to read a few. So first one, light is in a noun. We have something that makes vision possible. The sensation around stimulation by the receptive the visual receptor, so the light in this particular case, um, daylight, dawn, a source of light, electrical light, a color of notable lightness, so a light or a pale color. Another one, spiritual illumination, inner light, enlightenment, truth. Another one, something that enlightens or informs. So this is light, the shed light on a problem. A set of principles, standards, or opinions, as well as 
a representation of art. Now, an adjective, one adjective for it will end up being bright. When you think of explaining something that is very, has a lot of light, it's bright. Um, another one to ignite something, to light up something. So those are the ones at least I got for light. Now, next one we got for dark, which I'll go through a few. Again, the same thing. Dark has noun adjectives, and it also has some things about when it comes to being a verb. So next, dark, devoid, or partially devoid of light, not receiving, reflecting, or transmitting any type of light. What's going on, Kundin? What's the word? Good to see you up in here. We're just on the next part now. I'm getting the definitions in, but we're going to be talking about light versus dark. And we'll, and I'm just putting the definitions in here so people will know. Next one is um, holy or partially black. So something dark is partially. And this is all coming from Webster's Dictionary. So light, I got it from Webster's. And now dark is also from Webster's. Um, another one. Relating to grim or depressing circumstances. Another one, not clear to understanding. So previously we're light when it came to that was bringing in that understanding. And also the spiritual illumination of something. So to bring something to light. Now you have dark saying not clear to the understanding. So basically still not sure of or where things are. Like you're in the dark about things. Um... Intense color, coloring, pigmentation. So that also having to do with skin color. Um, something that's done in secret. Possess, possessing depth and richness. It's another one. Interesting. To have depth and richness in it. So in particular, it says a dark voice. Um, close to the public is something that's dark. Another example. A place or time of little or no light. Dark. A color of low or very low lightness. So a dark or deep color. And another one. To become dark. To stop operating or functioning. Which means to shut down. And lastly. Um, to make dark. Some of these definitions just uses the word. And I'm, sometimes I'm not fond of them using the same word. So yeah. So those are a few there when it comes to definitions for dark. Now you're wondering, okay, where are you going with this whole setup of light versus dark? Well, I want to go through and be able to to clearly shed, quote unquote, light on both light and dark and talk about what we think about them or what we commonly know about light and dark. And then also talk about some of the misconceptions that we get from light and dark. Okay. So let's see. And while y'all doing that, let me see. You got some comments in here. Said I like the way Audrey Lorde um, reframed dark as ancient and hidden, so similar to secret. Yes, 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 yes. And that's what we're doing. We're framing it up from what we conceive light and dark is. Normally, to what are some other thoughts and what is known about light and dark? Now, when we when we commonly speak of light, we attribute it to not only just the sun, but we also attribute it to what we use in our room. So the lights I got going on right now, but we also attribute it to the whole concept too. Of when we say good and evil, you think of the light side and the dark side. I mean, the example, the greatest example everybody gets that from is, of course, Star Wars, where you have the light and the dark and those forces together, and the force is strong with you. You have, you know, Darth Vader, and you have Yoda and those on there, Obi Wan, all of them on on that particular side of the light versus dark. I mean, there's the whole setup again with that too. Is you have the the hero and the anti-hero or you know the hero and the nemesis and those are also played off of concepts of dark um and light or light and dark and 
when we think of the word light, we have a deep association for something that is good, something that, you know, brings about enlightenment, something that helps us to grow because the sun provides the light for that things to thrive and to live and to grow. And when we think about the dark, we think about things that are evil. We think about things that um, are hidden. We think about um, things that necessarily are not good just based off of what we see about the dark. Not knowing that, again, if you understand that for you to really know one and the other, you have to end up having both. And knowing that even though, yes, light can have these positive attributes and dark has negative attributes. There's also the flip on both of them, again, having the pros and their cons, having their ups and their downs when it comes to these concepts. Now, what I want to get into with light in particular, one of the main things, we think of light being this great thing. Don't forget, if you have too much light in something, that it can become blinding. That's why they have a such thing as a blinding light. And that's always the overconsumption of things and not being able to have a balance of those particular things. And... As much as light, of course, can be able to shed, you know, information and to bring about you learning more stuff, something that is too much of something for you can also do the opposite for you. So if you start to shed light on too many things, you start to learn too much stuff or you start to give the or your plants or anything too much sunlight it can have a, a, a reverse effect or say the negative effect of you being too light or, show, or grasping too much or giving plants things and such of that sort too much light. That's what happens with folks who be out in the sun for too long. There's the whole thing of getting too much sun to a point where you can develop skin cancer, etc. All these other, you know, adverse Effects from having too much of light. Now, again, the whole idea of the balance. But I really wanted to touch on touch on that light as well, too. Look it, I'm glad you just said it. Me and you on the same, I swear. Thank you, Kundin. So yeah, like like flash like flashing lights or strobe lights can cause epileptic seizures in some people. Yes, exactly. So for those folks too, if, if that's what's bothering you right now too, because I have different lights changing as I have in the background, like yes, again, in different environments and spaces, light necessarily has a different meaning wherever it may end up being. And I'm not trying to just say like, oh yeah, overall, like, oh, light is only just supposed to have a positive, you know, meaning. No, that's why you have to have both, again, both sides, if not multiple sides of what something can bring you. So I'm glad you said that because that's what I was just about to get into. And let's see, you also put, I actually wrote a micro story that reframed dark as good and light as evil. And doing things like that too, reversing, so you can get to see also, another side through that, because, again, you want to look through and find a multitude of not only what can be seen on that side about light, but the same thing about what can be seen on the dark. What 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 darkness really can bring and really promote and bring wellness into a person. Now, I'm going to flip to that side because we've already been on the light. If y'all have some, please, I'm appreciative y'all throw it in there as well as. You're all more than welcome to come in and join me on this topic of light versus dark. Because, again, I just like to spitball and, and do a lot of these things. I don't always necessarily prepare off the top. It's just what I already know from my, I just say, my knowledge. And there's still so much to learn. So you're more than welcome to join. But just know that this does go on YouTube. So if you're not um, ready for that, it's all good. But let me see a comment. Damn, I'll go right into it. All right. Even for me, I get headaches sometimes when some Instagram filters and also when the ceiling fan is on under a bright light. See, again, and that's where you and that's where you I mean you start to learn 
again, the homeostasis, the equilibrium, the balance with things. Because we can talk about, you know, hot and cold and the whole certain things. Is we already, we, if you don't know, I mean, that's why our body and why we, we look for and we continually do on a daily basis try to find that balance. Is because when we have too much of something, we lack and miss out on things. So, I mean, we definitely want light, especially from the sun, if you can, to help provide you with some type of, um, you know, melanin to help you be able to sleep at night. There's a whole setup with that, how sunlight is very beneficial. Again, like I said, the sun brings that energy and that light to also have things grow. So that's, you know, the beautiful side of that. Um, Now, with the darkness or with just dark. Every time you hear a thing dark or something that says it's dark, the first thing you think of is a negative association. We just ended up finishing, you know, celebrating. I don't personally celebrate, but celebrating a holiday that's based off a lot of those things that are necessarily dark, you know, in the in the night and brings about night crawling and all that stuff, which is Halloween. I'll be here on 31st. Um, A great example of a flip on dark. Me personally, because when people think about it, is a, is a dark thing is um, Dia de los Muertos, which is usually on the on November first, which basically stands for the Day of the Dead. And during that time, you know, it speaks on talking about you know families and um, loved ones who have passed on into the next life, but also providing them um, with a space to not only just mourn, but to you know celebrate the life. And that's out of something that we would think is completely dark. And, you know, some people say it's evil the way that it looks like it can be worship and all these different things. But it, it touches on the fact of how powerful, you know, even dark situations can be to not only bring people together, but to be able to fully understand, you know, the light side of how things, you know, when things are, you know, very gloomy and very, you know, dark on one side, it it lets you and it provides you with seeing the brighter side of the things and noticing that even though we have family members and those who have passed on, we know that we can bring that particular love and that energy to our everyday lives within the light. So that's one that's one portion of it. And shouts out to Alien Space Queen in the building. How you doing, Chris? What's the word? Now, the other side of that. And I'm going to get back to the comments, too. Because I see you already put more in there. Another side of that. Um, with darkness. Which was an interesting definition that I saw here from, um, again, Webster's. Was talking about... Um, you know, not knowing, basically, you know, trying to come into it to um, not clear to the understanding. So. With that. With you. Trying to come into the knowledge and understand it, that's when you are in the dark on things, but it doesn't fully say that oh that is a negative exp- aspect to have is that you're in the dark on things there's gonna there's things that i have little to no knowledge about and i'm in the dark on things but from that point as you're able to know that and you're able to address that that's the thing you're able to address it and you're able to see it for what it is and what you will make of it and take that to the point to now it helps you move into the light or finding, again, that balance of, okay, I didn't necessarily know too much about this. All right, let me go do some information, go do some um, looking up of a particular topic of learning. And then you start to ease away, not just from the darkness, but into the light, but then having at least a firm foundation of, all right, now I have something to know about this. Now I'm not in the dark on it. I have a little bit, um, you know, lit on the situation. So... We're good to go. So dark, not necessarily being like, oh, man, you particularly don't know nothing and nothing is happening at all. But saying that you're on your way there when it comes to being in the dark on stuff. Now, let me look at these comments and let's continue again. If I'm not making any sense, y'all, please, y'all can definitely throw it in the comments and be like, yo, nah, man, you tripping, you wilding, whatever you want to, you know, say to it. Now, let's see in the comments you got um, in Hinduism. 
the dark void is really important for meditation. Mm. It's actually the true meaning of goddess Kali. Because the ceiling fan under the bright light makes a stroke like like effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, do you know the story of Black Goku in the alternative timeline? A little bit. I haven't got to um watch. I haven't really watched Dragon Ball Z Super at all. Just because. But I do not. It's an example of um, demonizing dark skin in pop culture. Yes, I have noticed as well, too. Even though I, I like anime and it's very cool. There are certain animes that you'll notice. Even there's, yeah, there's a dark elf. There's dark elves. There's um, demon lords. And, you know, demons and things and stuff of that nature. And most of the time, their pigment is a very light, really, you know, very light or dark um, brownish color. Or even dark and then dark black, if it's that particular case. But just the color contrast between, you know, black and or brown quote unquote and other colors already sets up that feature of like oh dark necessarily means this and then you start to create associations that's and that's what happened with nowadays that's why there's a color cast system that's been going on for for ages and ages you know racism all of these things in sort is because of just the set off fact of again of us not knowing so being in the dark on things so when we didn't know anything necessarily about people, places or stuff like this, but we see different pigments and color, we start to go ahead and associate it with either good or bad, evil, all of this stuff. So and I see y'all blowing up the comments. Um, and that's where you want to be able to get to see and notice, you know, those differences and be able to call them out. Because, again, we have a whole setup to about. Um, different words. The words, bla words, black and white. Basically, when it comes to still light and dark, we think associate the colors. You know, black and white. You know, there's words that you know, blacklisted, blackballed, um, literally blackmail. All of these different things have a negative connotation versus like, um, or devil's cake or devil's pie. Like, you know, whitelist. All these other different. Just uses of the words, but um, you know, black and white, but light and dark, even sets you up. Again, it perpetuates that. When you go to a wedding, what colors are you wearing, or what does the groom, or you know, the, the bride is supposed to wear, and the other groom? What colors do you wear when you go to a funeral? Again, in some, you know, in some communities and um, cultures, is you know for the reverence and respect, but for some folks. It's straight up just knowing that, you know, it obviously just means death and things of that nature. So when we start to associate the dark and the light and things of those natures, because it can have it. You can also, you know, die from having too much light. I mean, vampires is an example. I know we're talking about different things, but yes, again, you having too much light, that can also put you there. People seeing the light before they're about to, you know, go on to the next life, that quote unquote say. But then also dark being that space for you to to learn and grow, because then there's some plants that thrive better in being very shaded, if not dark spaces, giving them water and they just stay there and they're able to thrive and grow from that. So to break and to go into saying that, you know, one is superior over the other is doing a straight disservice. It is more so of. An understanding and an understanding of both light is needed, both light and dark is needed to know the differences and to grow from the differences. Now, let me see. All right. Yep. We already know. It, but as that's going in here, let me see. I want to look back in these comments because y'all are going in, killing it um, right now. So let's see. Yo, is he here? Is he here? Hey. What's going oh, on? What's I the word? Yeah, see your laptop. All right, as you're doing that yeah. real quick and you're getting ready, All I right. got to read some of your comments. What's going on? How you doing, Kundin? What's the What's word? Up? What's the word? Regular. All right, let me see your comments you say. So he said, um, in many um, White Savior Fantasy Series 2, the villain is dark skin and called the Dark One. Yes, 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 yes. Um, Kimberly said, true. 
everyone's process of moving from dark to light, learning new things and evolving, becoming more knowledgeable about certain topics doesn't even and doesn't even determine someone's um, level of understanding or even wisdom. Yes, um, that's why I posted on my book. Yeah, those top three overcome. I, I knew he was going. I knew he was going to pop into it. It seems like every time we're doing some cross referencing with each other, so like we're just always in that particular just space together as well. Um, and then Kim said, "I think one has to find balance between the two. Yes, that's the that is the main thing. Is that we speak. I know I say so much about the word balance and things in nature, but it's just so vital for uh, just a number two of um, things in life." I mean, our bodies, again, like I always keep going back to that. I look at it not only biologically, but you can also see it within nature. There's always some type of balance to keep a cycle, to keep something thriving and going together. Because if we don't have a multitude of trees or things that gives us air, I mean, that's also another setup of things where we, it'll make it harder for us to live. So a lot of things working together to create that balance together is a lot of the setup that's there. So I'm always with balance that's that's one of my one of my favorite words if y'all don't know now that's one of my favorite words i love the word balance because of how powerful and how essential it is mm -hmm. um in spanish what is it um balance in spanish is balance but go ahead what you got for us Kundin? what you got mm -hmm. so what you got yeah. for us on this topic <clears throat> Yeah, I wanted to talk about, uh, I mean, we can go in like several different directions, but I wanted to talk about first, like, uh, the Goku Black train. I haven't seen it, but like a friend of mine was telling me when we had a, a similar conversation, actually after I read my story, uh, the God of Light and Order versus the Goddess of Chaos and Darkness, because chaos is not a thing that's demonized. Uh, versus order is seen as, you know, the highest. Yes. So I wanted to reverse that too. But anyways, uh, when I was telling him that story, he was telling me about, you know, Goku Black and Dragon Ball Z is about this alternative timeline when uh, there's an alternative version of Goku known as Goku Black. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is... Uh, <clears throat> But it turns out that the real Goku uh, somehow ends up looking like Goku Black as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a scene where there he's the real Goku is who's mistaken for Goku Black is surrounded by cops and they're about to shoot the real Goku. Yep. And suddenly there's literally uh, a character in the story that yells out, "Don't shoot! He ain't black." Yeah. And it's like right on the nose, like they're yep. not even hiding it. Yeah, you can go look it up. I've seen that. I've seen that um, yeah. part on YouTube a number of times. Yeah, and again, yeah. it's a those. It's just those subtle things sometimes that just pops mm -hmm. up just to you know play on the host. You know, set up the situation of what we're in. This whole not just the caste system, but you know, just the whole you mm -hmm. know racial priority of, um, or superiority of pigment, and one yeah. one is. One is again, like I said, one is evil. The other one is, you know, justice and you know, mm -hmm. right or righteous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and and the way we're colonized to also have like colorism, right? There, are, like in India, like uh, skin whitening and creams are a billion dollar industry, and ninety nine percent of the companies are white Western companies. There, right? so they're basically including upon our culture and distorting it and it's so like it's like we've had 1000 years of colonization versus only 70 years of so-called independence right? yes but they're still colonizing us in different ways economically mentally socially so like if you look at our gods and goddesses our deities the way they were painted they used to be a lot more darker skin. In fact, yeah. they were very dark blue. Yeah. So right now they're painted as light blue, but in reality, it's so funny because it's like, the reason our gods are even that color of dark blue is literally because the idea is that they're so dark, they're blue. Mm. In fact, I've actually literally recently seen pictures of some Africans who 
in fact, have a similar pigment to the way our deities used to be portrayed as, like, so dark as blue. Hmm. I've seen that sort of pigmentation. I'm like, oh, my God, that's exactly the way Hindu deities used to be portrayed as. That was the same thing with the whole setup of um, the color purple. Not the movie, mm -hmm. not the movie, y'all, but the pigment of someone being, you know, so dark to the point that they're, mm -hmm. you know, purple. And, I mean, if you look at the the spectrum of light, we start off with having a whole set of infrared all the way mm -hmm. so you have the ultraviolet, which I know beyond that is dark matter, you know, black and things right. and stuff of that right. nature. Yeah. But, again. And the meaning of our deities' names, like Krishna actually means dark. And and Kali also means dark. Uh, and then Krishna has sort of a soul sister named Draupadi who was literally born out of fire. Like mm. a real life human being born out of fire via a sort of, I guess the best word we can use is sort of magic, right? He was, uh, she was born out of fire. And, and because she was born out of fire, she's also dark skinned. And that's why her alternative name is also Krishna, but with a harder R, so with a double A instead of one A. Hmm. Hmm. Because they're soul sisters or brother. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, um, literally, thank you, of course, again, always for adding that and putting that space there. Yeah. But when you put that, you know, out there into that perspective, it's it's so interesting of how it's so pervasive through um, a lot of um, not only our cultures, <clears throat> but mm -hmm. almost in almost in our everyday life when it comes to stuff of that of that nature of the idea of dark and light. Then it goes from black and white, and mm -hmm. just to just different versus this and versus that. Mm -hmm. That it just makes you really start to 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 think and wonder. You know, what's really the the foundations of our learning in our system and what's really being taught to us about everything holistically versus, you know, only getting one side of the story or getting just a small portion of the particular story when it comes to the dark and light mm -hmm. or, you know, I mean, cause again, it is a very pervasive thing. I'm glad you brought up colorism cause that was going to be something I did when I also just don't end there because it's just so very known. Yo, what's going on, Kim? Yeah. Like I word? had myself i know i'm getting i'm getting my girls ready for school we're doing hair now and stuff but i couldn't help but hop in because this is this is something right that that i've learned to i think kind of just deal with over the past few years yeah being i'm fair mixed race right yeah um, mm -hmm. but my brother's dark my brother's your complexion mm. and my aunt's your complexion my mom is my complexion <clears throat> you know and there's always been this thing, and I always say this, I actually said this in a piece recently, there's no badge of honor or trophy that comes with being with someone that's my complexion. I don't understand where the concept came in of being with someone that's light skin is, is some kind of achievement in life because there's a lot of people that have a lot of ugly and a lot of nasty regardless of how they look. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's because of the the beauty system we have, and mm -hmm. honestly, throughout history, folks who have been shown to have the fairer skin have gotten them places of notoriety, and literally, because the the closer you are to being fairer skin, there's also the more privileges and the more resources that you can get to versus the opposite side, and again it's because of the system and the way that people continue to perpetuate those ideas and those stereotypes of the light and dark situation is why it is still so prevalent in its use today it's yeah, because right. we keep continuing to give it that power that's why we have people that's you know throwing out the whole ideas of the standard of beauty and that literally you know that's why they have the black is beautiful and all these different you know things to contrast from what has already been given to us and sold to us. But yeah, I mean, history's way back when. You can just look at different characters. I mean, you can go back 
I want to go set back during the medieval ages and they talk about like certain plagues using the black plague and like all of these different, you know, names in particular. Yeah, so much programming. Yeah. And no, most people do not question the programming that's running them. And they assume that what what they think is their own thoughts or what they desire is their own desires. Like that's that's why I quoted, you know, Yuval Noah Harari the other week, you know, mm -hmm. that the people who think they have free will are the most easily manipulated. So yeah. like they think, you know, they freely that is they're out of their own free will they are, you know, choosing light skin. But in reality it's programmed into them to choose the light skin. And also because it's beneficial for them systemically yeah. and systematically to be with people who are lighter skin, to be close to them. Like it's called being white adjacent, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. As well as you're seen as foreign that way. Ooh, got a red bone. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, in your particular case where I'm at, they call you red bone. Even though that, yeah. even though that's a term that some people would use for like Native Americans and stuff, because supposedly Native Americans, the color that they'll be attributed to was red. Um, but yeah. is yeah. the reason? It's just because it's not only is the foreignness of it, but also again, like you said, closeness to whiteness, and then at least for it's the, at least, the culture scape. Yes, that's the term that Vishen Lekiani invented: the culture scape. Yeah. Okay. Most and and I think in that sorry, yeah. <laughs> I think it was it was more severe and it's more severe out here in South Africa than it was there because I know if I'm there I'm I'm still gonna get classified as black, yeah. right? <clears throat> here I remember when when I had my my first uh, black boyfriend in the township, and uh, I went to go see him and we were chilling, and he had mentioned because I, I came across him a few years ago because now we're older and you know we, we got to talk and he's like you know somebody actually offered me money to leave you and I was like for real how much do they want? <laughs> you know how much because I found it funny um and then he says yeah they actually offered me about five thousand and just to leave you because of the color of your skin you just didn't fit <laughs> mm. but wow. I mean not you know, so 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 that's always been the the thing, but this is also another another way I look at it of of light and and darkness, right? I'm a very positive person. Yeah. So sometimes I'm overly positive, mm. <laughs> and it is even me because even when I try and and um, when I'm faced with a challenging situation, yeah, you know, it still comes off. As oh snap! Okay, she can't. You can't even just see what the, it is. What it is. This is a bad situation. Let's just move past it. Nah, people look for the positive <laughs> in that situation, yes. and it it annoys me. <laughs> Honestly, it does annoy me a lot. And finding that balance between the two. And and recently, um. Someone got mad at me for getting upset about something because they're not used to the mad side of me. Um, and they were like, well, why are you mad? And I'm like, because I'm allowed to. Am I not allowed to be angry sometimes? Am I not allowed? And I, like, I raised my voice and they looked at me and they were like, Kim, relax. And I'm like, no, it's okay for me to be angry sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so that balance between the two is so important. Yes. I'm so glad that you brought that up too because, again, it is it's just this whole idea of dark and light again it touches so many different um realms in of our lives like you just spoke on it from the emotional standpoint um and that side of like yeah some emotions that would be considered to be more dark will be the least favorable ones to show people but for you to really know what the other one is you will have to be able to experience it and know for sure that that's what it is and it's okay to experience that type of emotion and that feeling because of the fact that if you're not able to do that um again some people will start you know saying that you know anti-social all these other different type of you know the disorders that might happen if you're not able to express these things i remember your 
your example, cooning the whole thing with the person who ended up having a stroke and then that whole situation where they couldn't even, you know, pick between where it came with the emotions and the logic. So they could never yeah. decide on anything. Yeah. So that's like that. You lock away certain emotions that can't be used because it is deemed to be negative within society versus finding out outlets to be perfectly used to know that that's what makes you whole as a quote unquote a human. It's just that being. It's that between the both of those because it's needed. That's true. That's true. And as I said, like, it's it shocks certain people when you show them the different parts of you because you've just shown them one side of you for so many for so long. Yeah. Yeah. For so long. So when they see the cry, like for for example, when I cry, my mm -hmm. girls get the biggest shock of their lives because they're like, oh, "What happened?" Yeah. You know, but. I'm trying to get them to that balance because I know I never saw my mom cry. So I'm trying to get them to that balance to understand that we do cry as parents, as moms. We're human. We display certain emotions. And even when I get upset and I, I snap, I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have snapped like that. But this is why I snapped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because, I mean, how can we tell the next generation like oh okay it's good to find a balance between light and dark it's good to be happy sometimes and it's good to be sad sometimes depression is normal it's something that you go through but we're not showing them yeah <laughs> we're not showing them what it's like to be around someone that's going through those motions and that's why i think a lot of us have partners that when we go through those things they want to run and leave because they don't understand what's going on. They yeah. don't know what's happening. Instead of trying to understand it, as you said, getting knowledgeable about certain things that you don't know about. Yeah. And opening that door for conversation because not everyone wants to open that door and say, oh, let me learn about engineering, for example. Because my partner is into engineering, let me just school myself on the basics. So yeah. we can engage in conversation, but not a lot of people want to do that. Yeah, we're not life. We're not lifelong learners because at the end of the day, yeah. even though it's written, it's written. I mean, I where I used to go um in school because I went to um private school all my life. Besides, um, my last recent from my um masters, but there is there is um different rules. Or I can say like these expectations we had. They were called SLEs, so they were called their student um learning expectations. And a lot of them on there was talking about being like a lifelong learner and being able to continue to um to grow beyond what you're learning there. But it was so idealistic because the stuff that you was learning in the school doesn't necessarily set you up to want to continue to be a lifelong learner. To me, it actually does the complete opposite. It just makes people be like, all right, I had a base here or I don't like this subject at all, so I'm not going to go nowhere near it. It sometimes honestly does that complete you know, it does a, a whole complete disservice to really what learning is. And I've always that's been always one of my um, gripes and issues with education, especially here in the U.S. I mean, I don't you know, knowing anywhere else is that that love for just the idea of learning or the word uh, from education is educe, which means to bring out. I don't that's not what education is doing. It's more so to program and to make you just be satisfied with what you got the half if not the f incomplete um history of um things and just leave it there don't worry about anything else because government got you oh you don't know that all right just watch the news yeah, um you have this okay you're good on that so i'm i'm like i'm glad that you you did touch on that piece because then again see look you see how deep light and dark goes from we just went from talking about it in concepts of from um, animes and just like like there to emotions to education it go it it's, it's so it's so and, and a lot. these spaces is because we come with our different perspectives as to how we look at different things mm -hmm. well, somehow it always ties up somewhere along <laughs> along the line it brings a lot of light to different situations and I mean, as you said, like with the education system, the education system also sucks out here in South Africa. Um, mm. I think because the love for education, because as I, said, I, I mentioned the last time, I've been a teacher for about seven years. So mm -hmm. the love for has gone. And this is why I love working with uh, daycare. You guys would call it kindergarten. I preferred working with that age group. <laughs> 
because it's easier to get them out of certain habits and it's easier to 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 speak to them about certain things and behavioral issues and you know um and that's the foundation of of certain things that they might learn from you that they're not going to learn from anybody else but you yes. care down the line and yes. the care the love for education is gone Mm-hmm. And part of it is because, and this is this is at least from my own observation. So I'm glad that you reminded because I did remember that you said you were a teacher. It's perfect. Um, one of the things that's not um, really congratulated or at least brought up with the kids is um, asking them questions, as in like, what do you want to learn, or like, what do you want to know, like, what 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 particular you know subject or something is your strong suit like what is something that you really like about it cuz that's what i would do with a lot of the students when i was working and doing a lot of the reading i know some of the kids did not necessarily like the whole idea of reading and getting to the fun and stuff of that but what i would do with it is i either paired with something that they would like but at the same time also show them how important that reading is but then show them that it is okay for you to do it start from right here and then figure out you know how you can use it to um, even just better what you know about the thing that you like that actually reading can actually help you with doing that but at the same time i would challenge older students cuz these are kids i'll say this is elementary um i would challenge older students to do the same thing but i would tell them okay i know you said you don't like history i know you said you wasn't a fan of math but what else do you like then okay so you all right you like okay so you like call of duty All right. Go to history class. And I want you to find one thing that you at least learned for the day that you like and I can tell you how that connects to Call of Duty cuz did you know that Call of Duty if you look through all the lineages and stuff on Call of Duty they talk about the historical times at least within the US. You got the World War 1, 2 and then you have yeah. modern times to so what's going on now even some parts in Afghanistan. So you can start to at least piece together and accommodate where the child is meet them where they at when mm-hmm. it comes to learning a lot of those things so that you can pull out that growing in that love for learning cuz I got to do that again with a few students and I will let them explore that and I actually learned a lot too and they yeah. would literally now when they would go home they start want to learn how to do more and just go from there so it's really again I mean shots out But that is really easy. asking those effective questions Yeah, ahead. that is the beauty of education. That's the beauty of education because you are imparting into them, but you're finding a new strategy. Because let's be honest, the same way we were raised, um, us as parents can't raise our kids the exact same way because things are different now. The yep. same way we were taught back in elementary or, or daycare or, or kindergarten can't be the same way that our te- our kids are going to get taught. there has to be there has to be a difference so we have to learn to come down to their level and as an educator it's important to understand that learning through informal ways is the most learning that a child is going to learn yes um because for example like um the the, the school that i had worked at last the principal used to like um fetch one of the kids and he used to sometimes you know jump a red robot or something you know if they're rushing and mm-hmm. uh once he had one of my students in his car and then he says oh the color and he was about uh, two and a half almost three and um he was like oh the colors of the robots she kim said red says stop are you just be careful and green says go so now he ended up singing the song with the actions and he's like oh okay and then when they came to the robot he says red says stop the red says stop so <laughs> he looked at me afterwards and he says kim i can't get away with shooting the red robot with david in the car because david said to me red says stop so i must stop the car <laughs> he says press the brake Press the brake. He says, "Impress the brake and stop." That's how Teacher Kim says the car presses the brake because we literally walked around the whole school like we are driving cars and we're pressing <laughs> the brake. And I'm like, "Okay, let's check left, let's check right," because recently I went to go fetch my kids, my girls from school, and I was walking across the street where it was a, it's a busy highway, and there's the robots. So it's my turn to walk as a pedestrian. But the kid behind me, he was about maybe 12, 13. 
he was running while the robot wasn't even timed so i had to grab him and he was mm. so big mm. so I'm like, okay so this wasn't put to you to look <laughs> Even when the robot changes you still got to look cuz someone's going to want to probably jump that robot. Yep. You know so it's important for us to teach these things informally and and as you said ask them oh okay so what do you want to learn about what do you want to talk about. So that's something I would talk to them about like um in the mornings we do our work our structured work and then for the next 5 hours of the day it's like informal learning. So I'm like okay let's go sit outside and have our lunch under the tree. Let's talk. Yep. it opens up the door for conversation to to um not just bring certain things that are, are in the dark like a bruise yes. it brings those things to light it shows you where the child is mentally it tells you if that child is is a child that needs more attention less attention yes. you know so being an educator <laughs> is challenging but at the same time it's a beautiful thing yes. because that's why i think we learn more about the concept of light and darkness when we deal with kids. Yes. Cuz they're very easy to pick it up. It's it's very easy for them to pick that up. Yes. They are they are definitely clued into the universe more. That's where before all of the you know the programming and the, um the washing of the brain and things and stuff of like that nature um happens. And I mean to your point with being able to do that and provide a space and a place for students to explore that learning and to to come to grow into that that's where you build the autonomy for them to take on the ownership of the learning as well as take on the ownership of their thoughts and things and what they want to end up doing because ultimately going back to the whole thing with dark versus light that's what that will provide that perspective so then you'll be able to have your own autonomy of knowing the difference between what is light and dark and how those two actually play together and again like i've said before we've talked about the hermetic principles i know kundin you went to go make sure about where that came from and figure all those other things out but just the whole the whole setup of the um the idea of polarity and knowing that these opposite sides together come to make the whole even though they're 100% in their own right for each side but it lets you know from either side these are the ends of the spectrums and then there's more that's there in between So like you said, we may be in the dark, but then once we start learning something, maybe we're slowly moving on that edge to come more into the dark or I mean into the light and come maybe right there in the middle be neutral, whatever you want to end up calling it. But being able to build that autonomy and be able to um push that wantingness to learn and to keep growing is where you're able to open up and have, you know, a greater perspective on things. If you're not we can backtrack to how you were set up back in childhood a lot of a lot of issues that show in our here in our faces has to do with our past whether if it's in childhood into you know teens and then now it all has to do with your past yeah i'm going to run away but before i run i'm going to leave you with this right so come on run away you're going to run away from the light and go to the dark now i'm just kidding Nah, it's too bright out here to even run into the dark and it's too bright out here. <laughs> But yeah. the sun is like the sun is out. It's really hot. Um Wait, about you're still in South Africa? Yeah, I'm out in South Africa. Oh. It's hot out here like outside. It's hot. Like the sun is not giving us a break. The rain just oh, doesn't wow. want to come as well. Y'all near the equator, so come on now. This is yeah, this is what it looked like. This is a, you should live in Burma so that's six in the morning. Oh wow. Yeah. 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 Look beautiful though. So like 5 five, 5 6 years ago a good friend of mine asked me um nah 5 years ago a good friend of mine asked me if I was happy. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I've never been asked that question in my life until that person asked me that question. <laughs> I'd never been asked if you are happy. And it was like straight forward like Kim are you happy? And I'm like yeah, I'm happy if my kids are happy, you know the normal question answer. And he says no, are you genuinely happy if your kids um let's let's exclude them from this, but are you happy? Yeah. And I'm like well, I'm happy if my partner is happy. And he's like no. exclude that process <laughs> and it had to open up my mind to be like oh okay kim are you really happy 
because I feel like there's certain questions that we need to ask ourselves when we are in dark spaces or when we're in overly light spaces. Are you genuinely happy? Mm. Is this genuinely a space that you need to be in? Is this a space that you are learning to adapt in? Are you finding balance within that space as well? Yeah. So it's good to ask ourselves those questions, you know, in the heat of everything. Now I ask myself that question. I'm like, are you happy? And uh, I'm like, yeah, you are very happy, <laughs> you know. So because happiness shouldn't be banked on somebody else's happiness. Our happiness shouldn't be banked on how much um, we gain financially and everything else. Yes. But it should be gained on, I feel, a lot of the things that um, we've had to learn over time, you know, that contribute to our peace. So I, I found peace. I'm like, I'm happy. I'm good. Mm. <laughs> so I'm going to leave you guys with that. <laughs> I'll probably listen up later when I drop my, my two minions off. <laughs> do what you gotta end up doing always appreciate yeah. you coming through and, and adding you know your perspective on there but yes um, go ahead and go um, bring some more light to the world okay guys peace bye bye oh, bye bye <laughs> oh, bye yeah it's funny I was uh, it's interesting the you know the presuppositions, you know, mm -hmm. that we have, even when we talk about balance, right? That's why yes. I did this earlier, because I luckily have this demo switch, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And so here's the funny thing. I've, I've had this painting for five years. Uh, I painted this five years ago. Mm. So let me show you. Oh. This painting, right? Okay. Um, hmm. with, they're hot with the many colors, but the main point is the center. center. Where they're, well, not exactly the center, but like this black and white thing here and the black and white thing here. Yes. So if you look closely, one side has black in the center and then the white coming out, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other side has black outside and the white coming in, right? Yes. So I drew that to really depict how there is uh, similar to chaos theory. According to chaos theory, there is uh, chaos and order, and then order and chaos uh, at infinitum, like infinitely at, at infinite levels. Yes. There's chaos and order, and then order and chaos, and chaos and order over and over again. Similarly, light and dark is kind of like that. There is like. Uh, yeah, there's darkness and light, and then darkness and dark, and then over and over again. Yes. Literally in our, in our bodies as well, in our energy, the way our energy is structured, especially around our hearts. Mm -hmm. That's why it's drawn inside the heart. Because there's literally on the right side of your chest, or to the right of your heart, there's a space called the dark void. Mm -hmm. And if you rest your awareness in the dark void for even just a few minutes, like many people claim that just a few minutes in that yes. space is equivalent to uh, the best sleep of their lives. Because, mm, I mean, uh. to your point, and then now you got me wanting to share something, even though there's going to be a sneak peek for a lot of folks who ever watch the show. Um, it's very important, and I learned, too, when it comes to sleeping smarter, is yeah, the, the light use. differential. I posted about that. You need sunlight in the morning, and then you need to turn up all the the blue light at night, and and possibly even have the sleep mask on if you can. Yeah, so that you have that total darkness at light differential. But yeah, my room, my room yeah. gets completely dark because I have dark shades. And everything I make sure that there's mm -hmm. little to no light brought into the room because of knowing how powerful it is to definitely sleep in um sleep in dark. But speaking of how you're talking about. Um, the concepts with um, the, the the dark and the light with your um, picture. I have this as one of my next projects titled, and that's what it's called, Ooh. Light Work. And I had my cousin purposefully, I told him when I, when I see myself, when I was thinking of auras that I would have, I saw this. 
I saw there's a white that's Ooh, there, wow. but then there's the black on the outside, but then still it, it's emitting. So like that's the type of aura I would see when I was doing um little energy practices that I was doing for myself and just like imagining. Yeah, I that. literally invented that guided visualization uh, involving exactly what I talked about going into your heart and then going into the different levels of darkness and light over and over again. Yes. Uh, and, and it's really powerful. The reason why I bring it up is because the presupposition, right, is even when we talk about balance, people are talking about balance from a from a fixed presupposition that they probably haven't questioned. Yes. Starting with the even the presupposition about positive and negative emotions, right? Yes. I've trained myself to reframe it, reframe like positive emotions as easy emotions. Yeah. And the negative emotions as difficult emotions. Mm. Because they're not positive or negative really. They're on a spectrum. And again, they have even the difficult ones have their positive uses. Like yes. I wrote an article about this called the positive uses of negative emotions. So the reason why I bring it up is because so that's already one level of a presupposition. Then the second level that people have is they say, oh, yes, you must have a balance of light and dark, but they already have the presupposition that light automatically means the positive emotions and dark automatically means the negative emotions. Yes. And I'm here to like question even that. That's why I made that painting. That's one of the reasons as well. Because I'm because now I've because I used to be that way too, but I've over the years I've really retrained myself to have a more bird's eye view of both and see it on a whole other level where it's not only yes, you must have the balance, but also to redefine what light is and what darkness is. Yes. To see light as not just this positive thing, like you said, but mm -hmm. too much can be bad, right? Yes. But not only even that, but also to see light as just just a sense of expansion for me. And to see darkness as very cozy, like the dark void, right? Cozy and soothing even, which is why mm. when you go to the dark void on the right side of your chest, you have the best sleep of your life. Mm -hmm. That's of your life, right? And I literally see darkness in that way now. So for me, it's not only about balance. That even that notion of balance for me comes from a different a level of presupposition. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, presupposition is a term from NLP, neuro linguistic programming, which I. <clears throat> which is kind of questionable on its own, but has still some uses, you know? No. Yeah. No, but, and I'm glad that you be adding to all of that too there. Um, I see a question in here in the comments and <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm definitely answer it for you from, from soul. Um, how long have you been practicing aura reading? Um, brother, I have not practiced any type of aura readings. This has been me just, going into my, you can say, the spiritual journey and figuring stuff out. So, like, the particular, like, oh, what colors and stuff that you are, I, I have little to no clue on that, but I, I have a sense of knowing, okay, what, again, I feel and what I end up seeing, and this has been through meditation, and this has been through just being, just taking time with myself. This is the aura that I, at least, envision and saw for myself, like, when I was doing, and it's how it's crazy how after a while it um it starts to at least really work for myself when I start envisioning like a little ball of energy and I think of like a comment comment ha like for those folks who again we come in back to the Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball references <laughs> but I referenced this ball of energy in this orb and when I seen it for me that's the colors that um clashed together it was this was this that color that there and I told um my cousin who's a um visual artist when it comes to making different pictures and stuff of that nature that's what it was for me but for me to be able to read it off of other people and be able to tell like what colors and stuff that they are i i i, I haven't so i don't i'm not an mm -hmm. expert in any of that i'm just learning to be an expert of knowing myself right aura reading is actually what's actually part of uh my actually introductory it was the first thing that we had to learn 
when we did the pranic healing. So, mm. so I've done level one, two, and three, all three levels. Uh, so yeah, auto reading is part of that. But so I kind of know how to do it. It's not the main thing that I do, but it's part of what I can do yeah. as well. But even before that, I I have a form of syn syn synesthesia. Okay. Synesthesia is when some people can see uh, colors in music, for example, or, or numbers have personalities for them. That's synesthesia. Where mm. the, the senses are mixed, you know, the mm. fused together. So for me, my form of synesthesia is that I can see emotions and color. That's dope. So yeah, so so if you're trying to figure all of that stuff out, um, please go and follow um, Akashic Record. Well, is that still it right there? Yeah, Akashic Consultant Challenge. Yeah, so please go follow um, the page and maybe we'll probably find some information and some more wisdom on top of that because I will say this. I am, <laughs> I know nothing of nothing. I'm just learning what I am learning right now. But yes, again, I'm being an expert on myself, not necessarily for others, but I will just say certain practices that um, help bring that energy out of you, just take time to be and then figure that out and see how that, you know, res resonates with you. That's all I can say, at least for a starting point, is like find what those practices are that help you to resonate with the energy and you'll start to read in and know a little bit more. I will say because of me getting deeper into a lot of that stuff, um, I got to go in and find out a lot more about who my inner self was. So learning a lot of these inner journeys and um, going deeper in. And that's where you start to see all these differences in colors and stuff, um, at least for me personally, again. Mm -hmm. But just take your journey. Um, the awareness is the first yeah. part. And I like how, is that the song that's playing? I'm going to laugh if that's the song that's playing right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so crazy, man. Oh, that's so crazy. Um, yeah, y'all laughing at me, but yeah, I have a song called Awareness, but I like how the instrumental's playing in the background, so that's why I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm laughing. Y'all be like, oh, what are you laughing about? I'm, it's literally the song I have. It's called Awareness. But, um, yeah, I don't know anything else on there to really um, to give to you on that, brother. Just um, take it in light with it. But, hey, um, you have any more um, things left for this whole thing of light and dark? Because then I do definitely want to move on to the uh -huh. next um, topic. But if you have any more points you want to add to it, please add, Kunde. Yeah, I want to add one more thing. Uh, there's a parallel between Buddhism and Hinduism, there's apparently a Buddhist saying, uh, I don't even know if it's true or not because I need to verify uh, it, whether it's coming from a white lens, but yeah. there's apparently a saying in Buddhism that says, if you see the Buddha on the road, cut off his head, which basically what that sort of means is that when you meditate, you will see visions and stuff like that. Mm. And, and even when they feel positive, they're not necessarily the truth. Like, they're not what you're searching for. Mm. You're supposed to be searching for your, your truest self, right? And yes. The truth about life. And, and so even if you see a Buddha, a vision of Buddha on the road, that let that go and then go for the truth, you know? And so even truth is higher than the Buddha. Yes. Which interestingly is not is similar to a statement by Meister Eckhart, who was a Christian mystic, who said, uh, "If I, if I see God, something like if I see God, if I see truth, uh, and if God were to turn away from truth, I would forsake God and stick sick with truth." Mm. So again, he also put truth even higher than God, right? And so in Hinduism. There is a story of Kali, and a lot of people misunderstand her story, right? Especially mm. white women, they misappropriate her, you know, by saying, oh, I invoke Kali, meaning I invoke, you know, embrace my anger. And and it's like, she's not really an angry goddess. That's not what she's about. Yeah. Uh, she is supposed to represent, you know, being fierce but also represent feeling tender yeah but even deeper than that so the story is that there is a special kind of demon that 
if you cut off his head, right? For every drop of blood that drops to the ground, it grows a new demon.、Mm. So, so what she has to do is she has to lick and absorb every drop of the blood before it hits the ground, and that's why she's shown as sticking her tongue out.、Mm. She's literally stick licking every drop of blood before it comes up. But after she kills all the demons, right? Yeah. After she cuts off all of their heads and licks all of their bloods before it drops the ground, at the end she actually cuts off her own head. This is、wow. the story that's hidden from people, right? So her cutting off her own head is a representation of her ultimately letting go of ego or that individual separate self. And and entering the dark void, because what happens when you cut off your own head? Nothing is left. No. Right? This is so mostly represent that nothingness. In Buddhism, is known as shunyata, which, by the way, is how Hindus invented the number zero, because they discovered shunyata, the dark void. Both Hindus and Buddhists did discover shunyata, the dark void. And the Kali is like a, it's almost like a storified version of that teaching about the importance of dark, entering the dark void. Yeah. So it's ultimately that's what it's really about. It's, so it's ultimately about knowing your true self.、Mm. Look at that, y'all. So exactly. Am I exactly like I know? But again, I'm always here, and I'm grateful. <laughs> be learning too. What you be giving out. That's why it is very important that we take the time to deprogram and to relearn some of these conceptions and misconceptions of what light and dark is, and then you see how much it ties to various different things within our life. I mean, for those who came in late, we were talking about how it's、um, present in、um, our culture. Um, how it's present within how our emotions are seen and looked, how present it is in spirituality, how present it is in、um, religion, and you know how present it is when it comes to even the words and、um, colors, because even colors have deeper meanings behind it. I've talked about it before. It's a whole study of、um, colorology and how it、um, depicts how certain colors have certain yeah. Feelings, emotions,、mm -hmm. as well as the psychology behind what they、um, do and associate with the brain. I mean, the last thing I'll say, and I'll put with this when it comes to the whole light and dark and color situation with it too, is that's why certain fruits and certain、um, vegetables and things are colored the way that they are. If you look at the spectrum,、mm -hmm. as well as the pH scale, which is a potential for、um, hydrogen, or no, yeah, pH scale, yeah, potential hydrogen. So it's showing you acidic and、um, alkaline. So certain colors is letting you know、um, what is either you know quote unquote you know good or not you know bad for the body, but at least they help promote that growth. But at the same time, the whole idea between the light and dark, the white and and black, it the one thing we, for folks who do know between that, of course, they say black things not a color to shade. All these other different things you can shade, say shade, shadow, all of that too. We have shadows. Y'all think about that too. You know, <laughs> when it comes from the light, it creates that shadow, creates that other side of yourself to be able to look at and see. But knowing that the color black is actually the presence of all colors, and white、mm -hmm. is the absence of. So even in that sense, it's, it's showing you that, and keep it going to a deeper point of why there's a whole such thing with the racism and things and stuff of that nature. Is like literally like white just having no idea of how to be connected with a lot of things and how. Dark, which can be all other types of shades and pigments, is being able to have that connection and、um, you know get to to almost anything, if not everything. But yeah, again, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going no more further into that. But I mean, it could it could it could take that turn too. So that's why I at least wanted to bring that to light. Is that bring that to light again? Is that both light and dark create a balance together in that there is nothing that is all super necessarily bad and one super necessarily good. It's all up to you to figure out that interpretation. Of course, you can have the general understanding of it, but please dig deeper. Don't just let it just、yeah. stay where it is. Exactly. You have to question the programming. That's why I prefer these days 
to read like even with fantasy to read like fantasy written by black women or brown women for example mm. like recently i was i finished the ray barrett duology and she came out with the second one the final finale of the series last month well in august and i was struck by one thing not struck by many things but this one thing was amazing where you know how in like fantasy written by white authors like something that's magic that's dangerous or evil is known as the dark but, art mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but in her fantasy she flipped it she referred to that kind of magic as the pale art <laughs> i was like that is good <laughs> yeah and there's i mean even the concepts of um the different the different elements and then um aether being mm-hmm. dark matter because mm-hmm. we don't not know too sure what it is but it's also very is very precious in the sense of how <laughs> how it's made up and what it what is created um there <laughs> from it so it's it's again challenging these thoughts and these um misconceptions we have for both and just knowing that it's there and then don't always associate black with something or dark with something that's completely negative and associate something with light as being oh it's always great i'm not saying that you can i'm just saying just be aware that's it that's it mm-hmm. again all this is this i'm not i'm just i'm not i'm not saying like oh this is your homework this is what you need to go do no i mean i'm i'm doing the best i can with what I, where i am and what i got and i know people aren't in those particular situations to be able to um dig and look deeper at themselves because they're trying to continue to survive in survival mode. Yeah. I get it. But if I'm if you're able to come here and just hear me speaking about it and it might at least make you have a second thought to at least look at it, then I'm grateful. If not, you just like, oh yeah, this dude tripping the host on um, why you always got to be on some spiritual stuff. You'd be surprised. We're not only fighting a um a physical war. There there's so much more that's underlined with that. But any last thing on this topic yeah. so we can move to the last one. Also, uh, in that vein of thought, uh, N.K. Jemisin also in her Inheritance trilogy, okay, uh, flipped it. Where in that fantasy series, uh, the god of light and order is the villain of the story. Mm. In fact, it's one of the two uh, sources of inspiration for my own story that I wrote. Uh, the god of light and order versus the god of chaos and darkness like mm-hmm. when i saw that she flipped it i wanted to write a similar story but also based on my own culture where my second source of inspiration is the story of gali yeah uh, as a dark boy so yeah so i have that so yeah maybe i'll share it at the end yeah. beautiful now yeah. y'all with that going to move to this next topic and the final topic for today's show which is how to make any place your home mm. now again i'm going to say it. you're guessing okay now what does this have to do with the previous topic let me That's let you know it's useful for people who are still living with their parents or relatives or even people who are displaced like 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 refugees or asylum seekers or even people from the diaspora you know exactly be like okay what does this have to do with the previous topic or anything i pair these on purpose because at the end of the day these are still intimately connected and when i'm talking about the aspect of making any place your home i'm not only necessarily talking about the whole physical aspect of a place of a home and things of that nature but talking about how to move within this world shots out again to um Kimberly talking about you know finding that peace finding that part of you that you can take with you wherever you are and you can be confident in any space that you're particularly in now a flip that I want to talk about and I actually did this with I'm a student Again, I'm not bringing back up students. I'm just letting y'all know. I love working with kids. That's my number one passion is working with the youth. Um but one of the things I worked with one of the youth speaking on and talking about was the whole idea of school and home. And these are two different places. And 
understanding why the student would act up at school and try to be a certain different way at school versus how they really act at home. And the way that I broke it down, because I'm a person that loves words, so basically I let them speak out what they were saying. And just from the gist of what I got, and I did this on the fly, I had them take out a paper and had them write school on one side and I had them write home on the other side. And what I did, and again, me and words, I told them to cross out specific letters in each one of those words. So I told the student, okay, I want you to cross out the S and I want you to cross out the H. And then on the other side from home, I told, I told them to cross out the H and cross out the O. And then I told them, at school, what do you try to be? And I had them point, look at it, and they see it's like, oh, cool. Yeah, the way that you act at school, it shows that that's what you end up being. And at home, you act like what? Act like me. Exactly. And it's based off of what they were saying, but in that moment, how I explained it, the student was so mind blown just to know that, yo, why do I really start trying to act like so cool and uppity and stuff in front of people, but at home, like, I'm acting like a, um, you know, princess and things and all these other different sorts. And bringing it to this point here, how to make any place your home is knowing that when you, when you speak of a home, that's you, it's me. You are your home, wherever you go. If you really think about your body, your body is actually, in, in, again, in different religious texts, it's a temple, right? So a temple's a place, right? So that isn't a casement for what? For your soul. So literally, your body itself is a home. And what is you is what's inside of that home, which is the soul. So anywhere that you are able to walk and take yourself, even if it is in a, you know, quote unquote, again, negative situation, or it can even be in that positive, or it can be just there in the center. You're able to take your home, which is your body, but also who you are within you is that core to set you up to be able to address anything that's going on. For me, I know there's there's different there's different sayings that are out there. I can remember some off the top of my head, not as well as um Kuni has so many back and forth references, which is so dope. But I know there was there was a quote speaking about basically that you really don't know what peace is unless you're in the midst of a storm. So really knowing that or in the midst of chaos, basically of a storm. But basically the whole idea and concept of that for you to really be able to be at home with yourself is to be able to have some type of peace, some type of stability, even with the undifficult, the very difficult times. So like you were saying before, either being um living with your parents or being a refugee or coming from a whole different place outside of where you are, but knowing how to, to navigate and to, to be strong within yourself is how you can create and make any space that you're in home. Of course, this is, of course, you got to be aware. Of course, there might be dangerous situations and things that you got to look out and have fun. All it is doing. So, you gotta, you gotta definitely make sure that's the thing. Ah, uh, what's going on, Adam Plum? What's going on, bro? man? I like how you keep making fun. It's not Galvin, my dude, but peace to y'all. No, and said no, Presti man. also. What are you talking about, beautiful? Man, psh, that's back at you. You trying to tell me y'all not you? Nah, man, that's y'all. That's y'all. Okay, <laughs> bro. You see, he sees. Oh my goodness! All right, he about to jump on real quick. But a uh, look. I gotta, I gotta warn. I gotta warn. This is, this is out of the, this is out of the norm. This is a special, special guest. Like what? Like this is interesting for this. But I don't. I'm gonna let them know that you know if you're gonna get on here, don't say something that you don't want because this <laughs> goes up on YouTube. So if you're willing to have this broadcasted out somewhere, then I don't know if you want to end up joining my G. Do <laughs> that. Y'all <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> we in here. Look, look, look. Oh it's good it's good to see y'all, bro. What's the word with y'all? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, we living. God, uh, hold it down. God, uh, we got your man over here with the fedora. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, look, 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 look. I'm letting y'all know right now, just so I because I want to make sure that y'all know. 
I put a lot of this information out on YouTube. So are y'all okay with being on here right now? Because it's going to be on YouTube. What's that shit on YouTube? All right. I'm just saying. I'm just making sure. I'm about the truth. You putting the, you putting the truth, right? Hey, that's all we bringing is that. All we bringing I want, is I want you to look at me and I want you to look at me. <laughs> oh my goodness, y'all! Y'all we wish you the best. Say hello to your friend. Have a good night. We appreciate you taking the call. Stay here, brother. No <laughs> problem. Yes, and we are gonna tap in soon. I'm. If I got y'all. Told you today that you're awesome. That you're mighty. That you're your name. Better luck tomorrow. <laughs> y'all so goofy, man. Peace and love to y'all, man. <laughs> oh man, yes, Bye. yes. Ah, uh, um. That was a that was a nice um surprise. Those are um some really dope folks that um mm-hmm. I know um plumbing wise, bro. If y'all need some, if y'all in Cali, like Adam Plumbing is the place to go with these folks. They are so goofy, but at the same time, very down to earth. They know how to make anywhere they go their home, which is a great look. It's a great segue into into a lot of this too. Is really definitely um. Mm-hmm. That's that's really where I want to get the gist of that, and then I want let Kuna come in there. Is that literally it does start with you, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Charity starts at home. Literally um, building yourself it starts at home, and when I mean at home, it starts with you building that foundation there and bringing not only awareness but bringing you know that love to yourself too. We're talking about the emotions again um, when it comes to a home. But I want you to go ahead, Kuna, and if you got something on this, and then let's continue with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a friend of mine has a quote that she likes to say. Uh, her name's Simran. I think it's something along the lines of, uh, "Oh yeah, bloom, bloom where you're planted, so that you get planted where you bloom." Hmm. Bloom where you're planted, so that when you get planted, you can bloom. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, so got it, right? Yeah. At least for me, per- for at least personally, for me, what I got from that is to be able to thrive where you're already from, so that wherever else you end up going, you can thrive. Mm-hmm. At least that's where I got. That's from one it. way to interpret it. Yeah, the way I saw that was like, uh, when you allow yourself or work to like thrive where you wherever you are planted uh, mm-hmm. even if it's under difficult circumstances eventually you get opportunities that take you to places where you are able to grow more easily mm. so you get planted where you bloom right? beautiful the you road that grew to another the place. yeah exactly you get shifted to another place where things get easier for you Beautiful. Wow. And I'm, yeah. I'm, thank you for sharing that. Cause then now it, it made me think about why once you're able to go out of this, we'll say this proverbial box that is either your neighborhood or where you're at. Um, and I know some, someone, uh, someone has told me before, this is from another elder told me too, is that um, once you leave out of this box and place where you are um, and you begin to explore outside of yourself you're going to find a piece of yourself everywhere that you go whether that's in a state in a different country in a different city etc is that from those experiences that you find another piece of yourself that you never knew before and i always thought that was um very that was very for me insightful and very dope and it made reason to why i had the you know the traveling bug at the time that i did and this this all started with me going from just different states in the U.S., which then led to me in undergrad studying abroad into and in Italy. And I stayed specifically in Florence um, for almost about three and a half, almost four months um, out there. And the crazy thing is when I was there, I learned so much more about not only myself and the, and the culture that was there, but from each place that I went, those little bits of experiences and stuff that I've never witnessed before just added to my my knowledge and my acumen of who I was. And I was like, yo, 
I didn't know I actually would do some stuff like this or like, dang, I didn't know sometimes I could be super spontaneous and one day get up, take a train to a whole complete different place, not knowing where I'm going and who I might encounter. And it's me being in, in particularly Italy and not really knowing Italian or the language as well, but still being able to make my way and maneuver around. It, it just started to just show, again, more of my, more of my character and more about myself. So I really took that that information that knowledge of wherever you end up going you start finding the more piece of yourself wherever you go i i took that with me and it just is prevalent because that just cost me experience mm -hmm. yeah the way you said it i like the way you play on words and the me in the home mm -hmm. I'll, i'll say that word in a different way from now on <laughs> so yeah. it's i like the way you you put it metaphorically right yeah but i also see it like the home even in your body is a home yeah but i also see it literally as the environment you're in so like yeah. on a on a personal note like you know for at least the first one or two years after i moved back to where i still am right now i i didn't even fully unpack like yes it's i didn't there were a lot of unpacked boxes that I didn't bother to take out stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Which is almost a metaphor as well for the fact of the things in my mind that I hadn't unpacked, right? Yeah. Like a literal physical representation of work, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> and because I always thought like, oh, I'm going to move eventually anyway. But then at some point I was like, In the meantime, I got to feel like this place is my home instead of feeling like a hotel room. Yes. So eventually I bought new bookshelves and I started unpacking the boxes. I started painting and things. I started painting and putting paintings up on my walls and things like that. So now like it, it feels like a home and I've had like, and since I started doing that, you know, like three years ago, I, I've had more like opportunities and I've grown a lot more like by literally like trying to bloom where I'm planted, right? Like building roots here. Yes. Beautiful. And I'm looking, I'm, I'm so glad that, see, look, at, that's why I love having multiple folks coming on or either just in the comments because then it just triggers other things that I have and I've learned. And to your point, because I was going to get to the whole physical aspect of creating a space and making it um, your home and you because it has the word me in it. I'm going to do another flip on that. Um, shots out to um, Three Days Grace, which is a rock band, alternative rock band, if anybody listens, Three mm -hmm. Days Grace. They have a song that's called, um, you know, Home. But in the lyrics, it says, this house is not a home. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what, again, for me, like I like breaking stuff down. If you look at the word house, you see if you break out a few of the words, it has the word us in it. And mm -hmm. when you think about a house, when it's, you know, multiple tool, people that's there in there that's your, that's us as this this is the house but is it truly a home when it comes to the aspect again of breaking the word down and it's me so even though you may live in a house it's not necessarily it doesn't feel like home to you because again you haven't even created a space for you in there to really make it feel like it and give it that that homey feel and like you were doing it's like you had all those boxes in there because you already thought in your head i'm gonna be moving soon so it doesn't even matter i'm gonna just leave them in there um But once you started taking the stuff out, you put up a picture here, you end up putting maybe the dresser this way. You set up lights like I got here in the background and stuff and things of that nature. The more that you start to incorporate pieces of you, whether if it's something you buy or that, you know, you, you give some energy to that you, you like, you start to create that space. Because again, when I keep saying this and I stress it, you're going to you get on my nerves about it. But ultimately everything around us revolves off of energy so anything that we have within of our space it has some type of energy to that and if you put that quote unquote either positive negative whatever type of energy you put into it it is going to be around in that space so again if you want to make a place feel like it's home you know what home to yourself you know means it's something that's comfortable something that can be safe something that you know brings out happiness or fulfillment so all right what are those things that bring that to my space let me put those things in there Yeah, that is so true. Like I just, I couldn't help myself. I, I think next time I just need to just stay off. 
<laughs> I couldn't even I couldn't help myself by hopping back in because um I resonate with that because I come from a very small town mm. right um you can search on my town it's called uh, Ishawi I'll put the name in the comments please do <laughs> um it's very small it's a very it's a farming town um in in KwaZulu Natal and the mindset of a lot of us back home was just stuck in in small town you know when they say small town mindset um yes. yeah i know what small town mindsets look like <laughs> you know and uh i remember in high school i was like snap i want to get out of here i need to get out of here i need to get out of here and i got out of there but then mm. i found myself back in there. <laughs> you know um and then i got out of there again and i was like okay every time life knocks me i'm running straight back so i was like i stayed within the same province though i never moved province so i'd move but yeah. i'd stay in the same province so i just moved to a different town or i moved to a different city but all in the same province and so i about 4 years ago I had to take the biggest leap and move 8 hours away to gauteng johannesburg mm. <laughs> That was the most traumatic experience of my life um because <laughs> because my, you know when you used to my mind is used to um a system a order yeah. uh, it's used to to um patterns that's how my mind my mind functions you know i'm i'm a lot looser now on it because i have kids so i, I can't push that on them so much but Yeah. that routine of being used to a province where everything was in reach mom is there aunts there uncles there brothers there and then moving so far away where no one is just accessible <laughs> yeah was hectic you yes. know it was hectic mm-hmm. then during that process it helped me um besides having to fight depression anxiety and everything that came with it um i mean i'd have like 2 hours of sleep a week or one hour oh. of sleep a week so it was it was crazy it was very 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 bad and moving in with other people was oh, it was even more of a challenge but during that process having to find myself through writing yeah moving was the best experience of my life because now when i look back at it 4 years later cuz next month will be 4 <laughs> years um and i look back and i'm like oh that's the best thing i could have ever done for myself mm. you know cuz now i'm like oh so kim likes a lot of other things kim's mindset has changed kim as yes it's good to keep a small town mindset when it comes to saving money yes i will keep that one <laughs> but mm-hmm. for everything else it was like oh okay expand and now when i talk to a lot of people that I grew up with that are still in the small town like I know so many people that have so much potential um yes. and they still stuck there I'm like so what's stopping you like I was just talking to another guy he's an amazing rapper he's an amazing um um MC he's an amazing um artist on a whole like he he paints and and I'm like dude why are you just sitting <laughs> he's like nah I don't I'm like no I like it now it it annoys me you know mm. years ago I was like that and it didn't annoy me <laughs> Yeah and it's in a, a lot of that is too because and I remember this and I had to look it up for us is um I I'm always reminded of this Oh yeah 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 the the comfort zone and all these different zones when it yeah, comes to the upper upper limits by Gay Hendrix and like that Yes so. So literally when you are able to take yourself outside of the comfort zone and you've never been somewhere before this is where you end up putting yourself in there is in this in that fear zone but as you start to learn more about like you said he's like oh I learned that Kim likes this or you know I know that yeah. um, Calvin thinks is like this you start to learn how to deal with all these different challenges and these problems mm-hmm. so that ultimately you grow from those things that's why for me personally when I heard that quote from um I want to say it's one of my teachers or like I said it was um another elder that told me about you know you find a piece of you wherever you end up going like I definitely have through a lot of my experiences where I've been put in situations where my family was literally like 15 hours away like not 15 hours but like in time and time zone wise but 
honestly, like days away. Like I'm over in a whole complete different country. And like I might be in some situations that I don't even completely understand or I don't even know how to handle that mm. I just have to end up growing and learning to okay, this is what this means and what this ends up happening to be. And it's and it's okay. That's again at the end of the day, when we was talking about this, the whole thing with light and dark and all these different things is learning that all these multiple feelings, things and stuff that happens, it's okay. Because that all adds to the learning and that adds to the growth of you as a person. So when creating yeah. this home and this space for you, um, now it, it's to a point where wherever I go, I'm like, I'm mad comfortable. Like I'm a, I'm aware of my environment. Don't get me wrong. Like you always have to make sure that you're aware and that you um, have some type of, let's say a bit of anxiousness. So that means, you know, that yeah. you're alive, but <laughs> I don't bring about, because then is the energy. I don't bring about that type of energy anymore. And what ends up happening is I create in my own self a space for me there that makes me feel so comfortable at home that I have no people that just approach me off of the regular that happens. And I have so many great experiences from it. Um, for me, some of those happens. I mean, that's how I was grateful to end up like connecting with Kunda. And then finally, meeting you in person was even doper. But that's why my mom will always be surprised of like, why would I go to concerts and places by myself? And it's like, why don't you bring somebody with you things? And sometimes I'm like, yo, if I reach out to people and they don't want to go, that's not stopping me. Like, I still want to end up going to have the experience. And I tell, I kid you not, every time I go to a concert, this is every time, it's been 100%. There's not been one concert that I have not went to that I have not, one, connected with somebody, two, created a you know business connection with somebody and then three almost gotten the opportunity to get on stage go behind the scenes or even meet whoever the headliners were almost every single time and it's because of the fact that i went there i'm not fearful of oh, i'm here by myself i don't know where to go i don't know where parking is i don't know where this end up happening was ha and i'm just there in that space people approach have conversations and we talk like, I ended up meeting a person who's from, like, Canada, like, far off in the other place, and they came specifically to this concert to meet the headliner or, like, at least talk to the headliner to sign their CD, to come to know that I ended up years, or at least it's been, like, a, yeah, a few years, I actually ended up meeting the headliner, and then the headliner midway through um, performing ends up, like, shouting out my name midway, and homie turns and looks at me, and he's like, yo, you know such and such? <laughs> And I'm just like, yo, it's crazy. And it's just because I went, I was there, and I made myself very comfortable to the point of, yeah, I didn't know where parking was. I don't know what type of people can be there. This could end up happening. That could end up happening. But then as I went and I threw, threw this whole comfort zone set up, went to that learning, I ended up growing and then creating more contacts with people. Honestly, Kunin, that's how I actually met um, 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 BTE or Brian from um, Apollo Bebop. Is he was oh. there at one of the concerts. He was actually um back in the um in the back on the side. I'm taking pictures, but I remembered him from music way back when is another name. I decided to shout him out and then from there that's how we created connections. That's how I made my way out to where you at Kundin, like in that area. And it's just me being oh. there in the moments and stuff. And yeah. it's making each connection. Um, this is, and I always say this. <laughs> I say um, make every. For me, it's always about making every uh, interaction with the person count. Mm. And mm. I don't just call people. I don't just be in everybody's space. Like I ensure that when I get off the phone with you, or when you get off the phone with me, both of us need to feel full. We both need mm -hmm. to feel edified after that conversation yeah. or interaction. And whether we hear from each other again, whether we not hear from each other again, that's cool. As long as you know the interaction you had with me was genuine, it was yeah. <laughs> that's who I am, and we keep moving, you know. But every interaction with someone needs to count. It needs to count for something or else they can't, or else we're not growing. That's yeah. what I genuinely feel. We're not growing if, if, um, interactions don't count if somebody doesn't come back with something. I mean, we can't control as well how everybody feels. But I remember being in a 
<laughs> in a space with someone and there were a lot of family members you know they always say like certain daughter in laws are are yeah they from the devil or they bad or like there's yeah. always something bad about some people and uh it was funny cuz a couple of year like two years back i came in contact with a somewhat daughter in law that wasn't very much liked and her interaction and in, in, with me was amazing i was like what are you guys talking about they're like why does she like you and i'm like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> you know because she was like kim come and sit with me and i sat with her we laughed and everybody else came to sit with us and we were laughing and talking and they said but kim when you are around she's a different person i was like that's not my business yeah <laughs> i'm not giving you a chance to be mean around me i'm not giving you a gap to behave in a certain way around me. this is how i am this is who i am mm-hmm. so it's either you have to adapt because i'm not going to change yeah who i am <laughs> and and again i am going to stress it with the energies i mean there is a such thing as we have our personal space that's actually like our aura in our zone so when you enter somebody's other zone and you start to have the um mixing of the energies that's how we always talk about oh i didn't feel their vibe or i didn't you know necessarily like what the energy and things there is bringing it's cuz that um spiritual level of communication is those different energies mixing and matching so if they're able to really mix um put um collectively together then that's when you get that resonant energy and vibe that comes together and mix create one when it's discordant and they not mix it that's where you get the arguments and other issues and i'm breaking it down again from you know the spiritual aspect and level you'll see different colors and things and stuff like that but again that's why it's important again to be set within you and to be on firm within yourself because at the end of the day wherever you walk and go you will be able to again like Kuni was saying with the whole thing you're able to um to bloom wherever you are pot, you know planted so that later on wherever you are planted wherever you do end up going you'll still be able to bloom and continue to grow and learn from whatever the experience is I know Kuni you've been chilling give us a little bit more what else you got what else you got Yeah, not much. I just uh, kind of vibing and disagreeing and, you know, as far as going to concerts, I haven't like I've been to shows, but I haven't had you know, similar experiences to you because I think, you know, with shows I make friends quite easily, but a lot of the the concerts I go to are like with people who are at least slightly more famous like like Nako Bear uh mm. or um oh Kina Granis although with Kina Granis I knew her long before she became famous and I was going to her smaller shows and then mm-hmm. eventually she became uh <clears throat> she won that Super Bowl contest and I oh wow yeah she was on she won a contest and the prize was that besides the recording contract she would get the, her song would be on the super bowl so like you know people know the song so yeah then that's when she became like really like famous and stuff yeah but yeah uh, but the parallel experience for me is more with like when i teach workshops right i i've taught workshops where you know um, 15 to 20 people show up but i've also taught workshops where just one or two people show up or even no one shows up and i still i still show up because i feel like that's my commitment to my work to my craft to, yeah. to be there and and to still uh, yeah to still be like even if not teaching but to still be giving out that energy this was before like you know lives and zoom were a thing the mm-hmm. way it is now and in fact today like most of these works are through the online and same thing like i would still you know read a poem or two if i go live and no one shows up right yeah. i would still be um be available like be there yeah i think that's important so. no very important i mean that's how 
that's how I would say in that particular um, aspect, that's you maintaining your space, maintaining your home. Mm -hmm. Just like how we yeah. got a cleaner room, how you got to literally um, upkeep with the lighting, take care of the bills, all that, et cetera. It's the same way. I mean, we take a bath. Mm -hmm. all, these, all these other different things that we do is um, we're maintaining um, our home and maintaining us. That's why you meditate. Mm -hmm. That's why you eating. All these different things to maintain that 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 side of parts of us so now i'm I'm definitely with you on that i'm i've been a very um i mean i've stuck to a lot of my my quote-unquote like guns and like stuck to what i said because for me i want to be that change that we want to see out in the world so the only way for me to do that is to definitely stay i'm i'm so tired of this but it's so funny i say i'm gonna say consistent and the funny thing is I have a song called Consistency, and it's playing right now, the instrumental. Again, this is the second time on this live today. It's so funny. But giving that to yourself to say that you're going to be a person of your word and you're sticking through with it, that is just, that's again, I said it's another way of showing that you are maintaining um, your home and you're creating and keeping that space to be yours and make it yours. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I hear you. I hear you, Kuna. I hear you. And that's why I've been also coming up with the idea of a hybrid life and in person. Right? Yeah. Because like this Sunday, I have my poetry book club and I still have, it's only like three or four days away and I still have no idea who or how many people will show up. Yeah. It's possible no one will show up. Um, but that's why I have the idea of doing it a hybrid where if nobody shows up, I'll, I'll still go live and still read from, you know, the poetry book and read my favorite poems and talk about it. Yes. And, yeah. I was going to say, what time is that again? Because it's on a Sunday. I usually have, I'm also doing it's a at, show. It's at noon, so it's in the middle of the day, noon. <sighs> noon to one thirty. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to end up being, because I've been um, a part of a show now. It's called... I said, sorry, my lines are going crazy out here. <laughs> um, which is um, Random Thoughts Podcast with another oh. brother that I'm doing. He, and he's out in New York. So he he's picked Sundays to do it. And specifically on my side, that's at 12. And he'd be running oh. all the way until like 2. So literally, oh, okay. I'm locked in with him from 12 to 2. For him out there, it'll be from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. He's on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. So... I already saw that post, and that's why I had to double check. Because I know you said at first it was Saturday. I was like, okay, I might be cool on Saturday. But then you said it's Sunday, so I was like, oh, wait, what time is that again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But no, I mean, again, that's, that's you knowing your space, your time, and keeping your word to what you want to end up doing. So you ultimately create that home wherever you end up going. I know it may sound like I'm rambling the same things over and over, y'all, but that's really the gist of it. Besides just the physical aspect, it is really about really going in there and doing the work to make yourself feel, you know, comfortable within yourself. Because then once you are really comfortable within yourself, you are able to maneuver with a lot of things. That's why, and I'll go back to um, to really learning again. That's why observational learning as a concept is very important for children. Because not only what is, you know, spoken or given to them, but what they are able to see and watch being done adds to not only their autonomy, but also adds to the part of, okay, what is comfort? What is, you know, something I need to watch out for and dangers and things and stuff just by letting them be in a space that you create to help them again thrive off of that. So for me, one of the greatest besides observational learning is going outside within nature and figuring these stuff out because we got the whole blueprint is outside. Go outside yourself or outside in within nature. That's the blueprint to let you know that you already had that from within you. So mm -hmm. just yeah, be mindful. Just be mindful. Yeah, exactly. Is that random thoughts live? Yes. Oh my goodness. Um, he can. My my boy. My boy lyrics be going in, but I love the brother. I love the brother. But um, yeah. For me, it's there. also about now. I also now think about you know, um, making sure I have like future content, and 
especially as a person of color, like I'll eat label gets erased all the time. Yes. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I don't like being on Clubhouse because you can't record anything. Mm. Um, so, yeah, because they want to like emulate the the atmosphere of a real party or real event where you know, things are not recorded, it's real time. Gotcha. But anyways, but for me, it's more about wherever I am, I don't want my labor erased. I want everything safe so that I can, I can do clips like I did last time with the, you know, show. I can do like one minute clips before I sat. So, so it was the same idea with this one, like, you know, with this Sunday or whatever event I do in the future. Yeah. So that's another way of going about as well, of another way of owning the space. Because, yes. because in the past, I used to be more concerned about who shows up, how many show up to the point that I eventually started, you know, charging for these workshops where I would charge, uh, depending on the niche and the topic, I would charge $5, $9, sometimes even $27 or $54, basically yeah. whatever amount that I felt was like appropriate. Where, where, yeah, where it wasn't, people didn't feel it was too much, but they also, it was enough for them to feel committed where I felt like if people pay for it, that's already a definite yes. Like, you know, so I already then have a, or have a list prior of how many people are coming. Yes. Because there's a difference between saying, yes, I'm coming and, and putting your money where your mouth is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I started doing that. And, and it kind of worked where I started having, you know, that uh, commitment. But I never like... I never had video cameras or recorded it, those workshops, so I don't have, so all of that labor is erased, right? Mm. Where had I recorded them, they would have become like an online course. I could have converted them into an online course where it wouldn't even have mattered if nobody showed up, right? Yeah. You know? So now my mindset has changed. It's still like this idea of, it's basically it's the idea of ownership, right? Yeah. Owning your space wherever, no matter who or how many show up. But now for me, it's another level where it's not only ownership, but it's now about no matter what happens, I will still have labor that I can save and that I can value for later, you know? Exactly. And, yeah. you know, with, with, with all of that, y'all, um, the more, the more main things, if I want y'all to at least take away from um, how to uh, make any place your home, I mean, number one is doing the things that you enjoy uh, or the things that bring you that joy and fulfillment. I'm um, seeing where you can place those within your life and taking time to really get to know who you are, what you like, mm -hmm. what are some of the places that, you know, bring you, you know, fulfillment or bring you this joy. So it doesn't end your joy, but it adds to it for that growth as well as for the physical aspect of you having a house or a place or wherever you live is put things within your space that you know that would resonate or it will be a reflection of you, whether that is a painting that you created or it's that couch that you've been looking at for years that you wanted to get. And now you can finally put that couch right there in the centerpiece of the coloring. So there's a such thing as feng shui. And literally knowing the whole mechanics of really setting up a house to really make it feel homey. There's there's so much, not only mathematics behind it, but also spiritual aspect, but then also a logical reason for why you would want to put things in certain places. I mean, I know when it comes to my bedding, at least where I have my my bed facing, I have it facing um facing east, or well, in this particular case, the bed's facing west but when i sleep i'm facing east whatever you want to say but there's a whole setup too about yeah, when that comes to sleep and two different systems for their how to set up your home the feng shui is from chinese yes in our uh hinduism we have uh, a different system called vastu which is more based on our hindu uh, vedic astrology as well yes so yeah it's but basically it's all about uh yeah, how to set up the the flow of energy in your room for like different purposes, whether you want more more wealth or better relationships, yes. and things like that. Like uh, some people even go as far as like if they want to manifest, you know, uh, 
a partner and then they would have you know two uh they would set up like two teacups by their bed instead of one mm. to set up the energy that they they already have the partner because if you have a partner you would have two instead of one yes right so things like the little things like that yeah exactly and um i mean with that is there anything you wanted to add with this kundan if not um do you have a last bit of summary before we close out the show for tonight i just wanted to share this uh like i said the poem last time this is kind of a, a story poem on light and dark ooh please do yeah <clears throat> all right the god of light and order versus the goddess of chaos and darkness the story in two parts part 1 Do you remember the moment the light blinded you from that dark infinite void inside you the fertile chaos that nourished the soil of your creative focus and expression mm. that was the light of the god of light and order he wanted all the power in the world mm. and the goddess of chaos and darkness disappeared from our eyes existing everywhere the empty dark of space mm. Mm. the empty dark of space the darkness beneath the swirl and the dark void within us on the right side of our hearts but hidden from you from you only available for those who don't participate in demonizing her mm. part 2 Hello darkness my old friend It's been a while I remember the first moment I discovered you you were so different from the fancy fake bliss of white light mm. you were something else a deep peace a vast space mm. infinite rest big relief mm. deep rest Hmm. Ah, sigh. My bird felt free from its cage of light and the order imposed by those in power and privilege. My bird was a hummingbird at first. coming along merrily 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 swimming about from one new original idea into another one new hidden room into another mm. in the newly discovered mansion inside myself now that so many previously locked doors were open with each room it visited it became stronger and stronger mm. it changed into a sparrow then a parrot and then an eagle and then an albatross and then finally a garuda spreading its gigantic wings mm. all across every room of my mansion wow as it hopped all the walls fell down total chaos darker than it had ever been at first i was so scared but the chaos freed me up even more because now there was no order at all to hold me prisoner all that was left was pure infinite chaotic openness that also contained infinite order but so much more wow the 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 theatrics as well as the whole you turn the light off for the for the darkest portion and then bring it yeah. back to the light to still talk about the i mean again the chaos and the order mm-hmm. it's always a great it's always splendid always of you sharing doing that y'all and if again y'all want to go please go follow check it out i'm going to have 
um, Kundin, Akasha, Akasha, Akasha Consultant Chabra. Chabra. I'm going to have it in the link after this for the video and here on Instagram on YouTube. I'm going to have it up there as well, too. Please do. Y'all doing yourselves a service and doing yourselves a favor doing that, as well as if you like also what Kundin mm -hmm. does, support. Support in any way that you can, either if that's sharing, whether if that is buying a course, whether anything of that nature, please do. I mean, I can say the same for me, but right now, it's not about me, okay? But mm -hmm. with all of that, y'all, same thing. To wrap up, appreciate your time always, Kundin. Going to do that every single time. Appreciate everyone's time, y'all coming in here to watch and listen. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to wrap up, when it comes to current events, main thing there is be aware of what's going on around you so that you can properly prepare yourself not only for what can happen, but what could end up coming within the future so that you'll know specifically what is going on around your place since we got home and places. Um, secondly, when it comes to light and dark, the main thing there is to understand the different connections between what light is and what dark is, but to also talk mm -hmm. about not only the balance, but the multitude of what each can mean. One doesn't necessarily mean it is completely bad and completely evil and dark, and the other does not necessarily mean that it is ultimately um, great and righteous. When you put the two together, you are able to get the ins and the outs, the within and the without, the up and the down. You get all sides and perspectives to know that having too much light is also a bad thing. Having too much darkness can end up sometimes either being a good or a bad thing, depending on how you frame and you shape it. But just know ultimately when it comes down to light and dark, it not only affects the spiritual aspect, the physical aspect, but also the emotional aspect. And also educational. Just learn to creatively, creatively, but I'll say also critically, think about what you've learned. Lastly, when it comes to how to make any place your home, well, they have a saying that says, you know, um, home is where the heart is. For you to create that home, again, for me, I break it down. I get rid of the H and the O, and what are you left with? Me. You yourself, your body. This is your home. This is your mm -hmm. temple. And your soul within you, that is you. So if you are able to get an understanding, an understanding of who you are as a person, how to set yourself up, again, where you um, are planted so you can bloom, and again, where you bloom so that you can be planted, that ultimately, once you're able to be stable within yourself, create that space and put things within that space and energy for you to thrive and be you. Anywhere you go, you'll have those skills and you'll have those places to be able to thrive and be you, regardless whether if it is chaos or whether it does have order. But other than that, y'all, I know some of y'all coming in last minute. It's all good. But this has been another episode of What's the Word Wednesday, Season 2, Episode 32. I've been your host, your brother, Advis. This has been Coonan. And next time, before we come in, I appreciate everyone who has, whether you've watched this now or you'll be watching this later on a playback on Instagram or YouTube. If you're on YouTube, please follow and subscribe to your boy at Advis Speaks. Don't forget, like, comment, share Subscribe as well as hit the mm -hmm. notification button so you can get more information, more videos, and then also be able to find where Kunda and everybody else that was up here is at. Um, and we're on to 1,000, so please help with the 1,000 we're pushing so we can keep creating this content. But other than that, y'all, for myself, Avis, and from Kunda, we'll see y'all next Wednesday. And Thank don't you, forget, keep doing your thing. All right, peace and love. We are out.